Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Little, and today I wanted to share another one of these which would you do questions. I've been posting these recently on Twitter and Instagram, on Instagram at jcardshark and on Twitter at Jonathan Little, and the replies are always very interesting to me. So today's question was which opportunity would you take? Free buy-ins in the World Series of Poker main event for the next 20 years, or a free heads-up game against one of the best players in the world where the winner gets $500,000. Seems like a simple question, but I've tried to structure these so that, you know, roughly 50% of the people pick one and 50% of the people pick other to show you all that everyone does not think the same way and everyone does not play poker or games for the same reason. So let's actually sit here and think about what each of these opportunities entails. So what is free buy-ins for the next 20 years? What are the pluses to that? Well, you get $200,000, but it's spread out over time. So it's actually worth less than $200,000 because money will be um, deflated a little bit, right? And also, you don't have any opportunity to invest that money over time. So you're just bought into the tournament. Forgive me if I'm sweating a bit. I just got out of the ocean. I'm in the Bahamas. I went uh, swimming in the ocean this morning. Seems like a good thing to do before day two of a $25,000 tournament. So that's what I did. Anyway, now I'm a little bit wet. Anyway, so you get, um, I'm not sure of the exact dollar value. Let's call it $150,000 or $120,000, something like that. But you know you're going to have it for sure, which is quite valuable to some people. Also, you get to go play at the World Series of Poker each year. That's a huge amount of experience and fun and enjoyment for a lot of people. Next, let's look at the other option. We get a, a heads-up match for 500 k Let's assume you're not equally good as the best heads-up player, so it's not worth $250,000 straight equity, obviously. Let's presume it's worth $225,000 in equity. Obviously, if you're a great heads-up player, it'll be worth more. If you're an awful heads-up player, it'll be worth less. Also, the structure of the heads-up game matters. If it was you know, a super deep thing where it took forever, well, you, even the best players would be at a disadvantage to the best players in the world, right? So... Let's presume this is worth $225,000 in equity. Well, at first glance, we have one thing that's worth $150,000, the main events, and we have something that's worth $225,000. Seems like an easy choice for the heads-up game, right? However, what if you lose? Well, if you lose, you get nothing. And if you started with nothing, and now you still have nothing, that's kind of a bummer if instead you could have had guaranteed main event seats, right? Also, say you have nothing and you win and you get $500,000. Yes, it'll change your life, but perhaps you don't have experience with money. Maybe you would not be responsible with it. Uh, a few people said, well, yeah, just take your $225,000 in equity, lock up $200,000 of it, invest the other bit in something, and you're good to go. But it doesn't really work like that because a lot of people, if you give them money, especially for the first time in their lives, they won't know what to do with it, and they'll end up spending it on a house or they will um, invest it in various things or they will make bad decisions with it. Who knows what they'll do? And you cannot count on people to make incredibly responsible decisions with money. It just doesn't happen. I mean, if you look at the poker world, a lot of people who even win the main event don't hold on to their money and they get $10 million or something like that. So it's important to understand that each of these answers should be chosen by different people. And I do think that the right answer for most people is not the heads up game. That may come as a shock to some people who are very math oriented, but it's true. <clears throat> so... Why do people play games? Well, I actually wrote a blog about this. Um, the three types of game players or something like that. I'm sure you can look it up. Maybe I'll put a link to it below. And essentially, people play games because they want experience and they like socializing. Clearly, that leads to the main event, right? There are people who like to do fancy plays and have fun and push the boundaries of the game. Those people may fall into either category. And then there are people who only care about winning money. Those people clearly fall into the heads up option, right? And very likely you fall into one of those three buckets of players. And it's important for you to realize where you fall. If you fall into the socializing experience type player, well, you are probably not going to be uber successful at poker. Sorry, but it's true. And the reason is because most people who value that do not put in the study required to become a great poker player. They're playing for fun. And there's nothing wrong with playing poker for fun. That's the right thing for most people to do. Now, the people who are who only care about winning, I mean, I, I certainly fall into that bucket. 
they will study hard, they'll get good, and they will do their best. I actually played the NBC Heads Up tournament. It was a $20,000 buy-in tournament. And I, I hired one of the best Heads Up coaches in the world and ended up doing quite well in it because I really care about winning, right? I could have instead gone on NBC and made a show and you know maybe, maybe gotten a bunch of endorsement deals, who knows? But that was not really where my mindset was. My mindset was in, I'm going to play the best poker I possibly can, and that is it. And, you know, in this scenario, if you clearly 225,000 is more than 150,000, so we're good to go, right? Seems like an easy choice. Now, the people who replied to my post, most of them were just nice, casual people. However, some people were very aggressive in their responses. They were like, you would be an idiot to take the main event seats because it's worth less than the other one. And they are not capable, or at least they are not in this instance, looking at the situation from the other person's point of view. Some people said, you'd be an idiot to take the heads-up game because the heads-up players would crush you and you would lose almost every time. That's also not true because even if you're not very good, you can just go all in blind every hand and you're going to win 35 or 40% of the time, right? So it's very important, and really the purpose of these questions is not to say one answer is right or wrong, but it is to try to get you to look at life and poker and everything from other people's point of view. If you only look at anything from exactly your vision, you're only going to see things from your perspective, and, and that's going to be clouded by your experiences and your thoughts, right? Your thoughts are not the only thing that matters. I know that's crazy to some people to think. They think they know everything. They think they have the solution to everything, but it's important to understand that you don't, and very often you don't know. And, for example, the people who said that you'd be crazy to take the main event seats they don't understand the point of view of the other people. Many people who responded to this question said they would just love to go to the main event one time. They'd be thrilled with that because they want to go and see the best players in the world. They want to interact with the best players. They want to come by my booth and, and say hello and buy some books and whatnot. They want to do things like that. They really value the experience. And to be able to do that for 20 years, to get to see poker progress, to be able to get to see poker progress for 20 years... They would love that. That would be like the highlight of their life. And, you know, playing a heads-up match against one of the best players may be a highlight of your life too, but that is one experience. And if you do win that heads-up match, there's no guarantee it would actually still go well for you and your life. And if you lose, well, that's, that's brutal. If you can lock up that experience, the guaranteed experience for the rest of your life, that's like priceless for a lot of people. And it's important for the people who come from the maximize EV mindset to understand that. Because very often you are playing against players who have that mindset. For example, if you go to a tournament, like I'm right now in the Bahamas, um, if there's someone who's satellited into this $25,000 tournament I'm about to play on day two, they may really value not going broke. Whereas I don't really care if I go broke. I realize I have two starting stacks, right? It's a ton of equity, but it's really just two starting stacks, and there's still a long way to go. And I know I'm probably going to lose. That's just how it goes. And I'm not so timid when it comes to getting my stack in if I think it's right. Whereas some other people may be very timid when it comes to getting their stack in because they got in for $5 and they really, really want to get a cash. Because if they min cash for $50,000, that's essentially life-changing for them, right? So knowing that they don't come from the same place that I'm coming from in terms of mindset, perspective, value of money, etc., that should impact my play. If you assume people only play and only think like you think, you are going to leave a ton of money on the table. And also, you're going to have worse relationships in life than someone who is capable of looking at things from other people's point of view. I mean, if you're married or have a significant other, you know that that person probably doesn't think exactly like you think, right? And if you treat that person as if they come from exactly the same place you want or they want the same things that you want, that's going to be detrimental. For example, my wife likes everything nice, neat, tidy, organized, and she is very diligent when it comes to details. Now, I like things nice, neat, and tidy, but I am not, I mean, I'm pretty good with details, but I'm not the best with details. I mean, look at this post, right? Can you find the typo in it? There's a typo in it. My wife pointed out in one second, and, you know, I, I saw it, but it was too late. <laughs> Notice here, against one of the world's best. There should be an apostrophe here, right? She pointed this out, and that's the kind of person she is, and she notices things like that, and she values things like that. And, and to be fair, I do too, but she values it more so. So I need to make a point in my life to not make little errors like that because I know it makes her unhappy, right? I want to make my significant other unhappy. I mean, I want to make her happy. I don't want to make her unhappy. And 
I need to be better about things like that. And I'm always striving to be better. But if I assume she was just like me, then we're going to have friction and we're going to be unhappy. So if you don't understand where people are coming from in life, you're going to have unhappy relationships or at least relationships with friction and strife. But if you try to see what they value and you, you know, adjust a little bit and give a little bit, that's going to make things way better. And in poker, if you don't understand where your opponent's coming from, you are leaving a ton of money on the table. So realize your perspective is not the only thing that matters. Be kind to each other. Be nice to each other. Inevitably, people are going to leave negative comments on these videos because they just simply do not understand. They're closed-minded. And to be fair, I used to be closed-minded. When I was a young, dumb kid, I was, I was a closed-minded idiot, honestly. And I don't know exactly what happened. Actually, I do know what happened. I started listening to podcasts from people who are very smart and who have many more experiences than me and who understand life better than I understand it and understood it. And I learned. And my hopes with these videos and with all of my work is to help all of you better your lives. If you're constantly trying to fight and you're constantly causing strife and you're constantly spreading drama and gossip, you're not doing it right. I promise you, you're not doing it right. And I want to help all of you become the best people you can possibly be so that you have great relationships and just have great things coming your way. So that's it for this video. Anyway, I think the right answer for most people is the main event for 20 years. But that's because most people are not playing purely to win the most money possible. And that's important to understand. Thanks for being here. Good luck in your games. And I'll talk to you next time.